Today we're going to build a table out of scrap plywood that has four stools and folds up into a bookcase thing of sorts. And we're going to use minimal tools, so pay attention. So I needed to get rid of some plywood. I had a bunch laying around and we're getting ready to move. And I saw I Jessup's video last week of a rolly table and that inspired this build. I wanted this small form table that could be folded up into this really small footprint and be tucked away. So I gathered up all the plywood, I scavenged some hinges or some piano hinges off of a project, and then I started cutting out all the seat parts because I knew I could use the smaller pieces and the more beat up pieces for the seats. So once I knew all the sizes, I milled up the material that I needed for those. Now the really cool thing about this project is that this can pretty much be built with just a table saw and a drill and a jigsaw is nice to have as well. You don't need a lot of tools to build this project. So as I was cutting up any scrap that was left, I was discarding, I wanted it all gone. And I had to go through a few of the pieces to find the you know right size that would work for all the stuff that I needed. Uh, which was cool, it just took a little extra time for the build. All in all, this build took about five hours. I think, um, you know, with plan sets and everything really laid out, it could be narrowed down to maybe a three and a half, four hour build. So once I had all the parts cut out for the seat, I slammed them all together, and rather than going through and trying to narrate this whole thing, I just decided I was going to put it all in fast forward, and you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. These seats nest together. So one seat, the sides are set in a little bit from the top, and on the next seats that I'm building now, these are like little stools, they're just boxes uh, that I'm using for stools, the other seat nests into that. So I'm doing two of these, or four, so each side has two nested seats. And these will stack on top of each other inside the box that I'm about to build. So with the seats made, I went uh, to the bigger pieces of plywood that I had, and I'm using that up to make this a box that the seats will sit in and that the table will also um, rotate on and I'll, that'll make sense at the end of the video. Lots of cutting on the table saw for this project. So the last thing I needed to do was cut up the pieces for the tabletop itself. So before I did anything else or started putting parts together, I did that to make sure that I had the material I needed for the tabletops. Now for the box, I can kind of get away with using frames if I don't have enough full sheets, which ends up what I have to ha end up having to do. So I wanted a full sheet for the top or the back of this box, but there just wasn't enough material. So I ended up making these kind of L uh, brackets and I screwed that to what is gonna be the side of the box that the the uh, seat set in and that the uh, table floats on. So after putting those L brackets on the two pieces of half inch plywood, uh, I needed to put a center piece in because the whole tabletop, the way it works is it rotates on the top and that's what holds the wings up when it's installed and that'll make sense here in just a moment. So I grabbed another piece of uh, scrap plywood and centered it out on the box in the back and then I'm gonna, you'll see me in a second, I'm gonna mark out the center for this making sure I had a sharp pencil because I want to get it as close to center as possible. And then I'm just going to drill a just over a 1 8 hole right there just to indicate the center of the back of the top of this box. So at this point I'm setting in the seats themselves and I'm marking out an area in the back where these there's going to be some legs. Now for this whole thing to work I have to have a fold down leg on each side of the box and that'll lift it up high enough to actually be a table. So after I got the pieces cut for the leg I marked a center point that would rotate well within the, the, the frame and then drilled holes in those, all those locations. Now this is going to sit tight up against the top of the box so it needs to have a round top in order for everything to work. So I cut that out with a jigsaw. And then I used the, that one that I cut out earlier as a template to mark out the rest of them. And then just, it was a rinse and repeat after that. Now this is just an experiment. I'm not being really neat with the joinery and I'm not taking time to put in decent blades. I'm just slamming this thing together. Now for the legs, I had to put stretchers in these on uh, between each piece. And these legs will get screwed into 
the box itself, like you see me doing here, and they actually lean out a little bit, so that kind of gives some stability to the table. So I put a 2 and 7 8 spacer in there, and then screwed everything in, and then once I had the, the legs screwed into place, I could take those spacers out, and that would actually make the legs lean back a little bit. Now, I'm, the spacers kind of bump each other, even though the legs nest inside of each other, I had to cut out a little section where the stretchers are. So I did that, I did that off camera, and then I put some, um, on, the, on the one leg that doesn't uh, sit tight up against the table, I had to put a couple of pieces so it wouldn't you know, rock back and forth. And then I cut out the section, so now everything will sit nice and flat inside of there. And then I also put a hole for a pin, because when I'm rocking this thing back up, when I pull the legs out and try to set this thing up, if there's not a pin in place, those legs will want to fold. And it only really needs one pin, two would be better, but one worked. So the legs are all folded up, and I did my math a little bit goofy, it was about an eighth inch off, so the um, chairs actually stick out about an eighth inch past the, the box frame. This is what happens when you're, you know, hopped up on coffee and working, you know, in the middle of the night. So the next step was just to recess or make a rabbit on the pieces of plywood that were going to be the tabletop uh, for the piano hinges to set in. Because the piano hinges are going to be on the bottom side, I need that lip on the piano hinge to be able to rotate across the top of the table. So I cut the piano uh, hinges to size and then installed them. And of course, everybody loves to watch piano hinges being installed, especially if it's, you know, 32 times speed. So I forgot to press record when I was actually installing the tabletop on the box, but it'll make sense here. So there's the, there's the whole system all put together. You know, the, each of these come out, and then you fold the legs down, and you can fold the top open, and then put the pin in place. And then you have to set this thing up. And the really cool thing about this is you just lift the tabletop open and then turn it and that locks the wing in place. And when you're not using it, obviously, that those uh, wings fold down to the side. So I actually have played around with this a little bit and, and I'm doing my video editing at this table and it's actually quite comfortable. I was surprised. Good height. Um, I love the fact that it's just so easy to kind of tuck away. You know, you fold it up, you put the chairs back in it and it's like a little bookcase that you can roll out of the way. I hope you enjoyed this build. Now remember, this was all scrap wood that was just laying around the shop, so a lot of it's got holes in it, paint on it, whatever, but it turned out pretty cool. I didn't spend any time really sexying it up. If there's enough interest in plans for this build, I'll go ahead and sexy it up, and I'll make the plans available, and I'm probably going to build another one out of some pretty qu high quality plywood, because this is just a handy little thing to have around, especially when the relatives come over or the kids' friends. Every month or so, I like to shout out three channels that I'm really enjoying and encourage people to go subscribe to them. This month, I have three pretty amazing channels. John Malecki, Fix This, Build That, and The Rogue Engineer. And these guys are all doing really cool stuff. So I'm super excited to share them with you. Links for all those channels will be in the description box below. And in a month or so, for those of you who watch their videos and see this cup show up in one of their videos, say, I found it and I'll send you a $100 Amazon gift card. It's that simple. So go subscribe to their channels, check out what they're doing, and watch for the red TMA cup. Be the first one to say I found it, and I'll send you a $100 Amazon gift card. I really love this community. I like to see it growing, and I love sharing great channels. Thanks for watching, guys.